Yo, what's up guys, Made Up here bringing you another Mega Evolution Team Strategy Guide. I know it's been a while since I brought you one of these, but if you could support this series once again by leaving a quick like, comment on what you think to the team and any recommendations to the team you would make, and of course, subscribe for more. So today, the team I'm going to be explaining is a balanced team built around Mega Sceptile. Mega Sceptile stats have changed drastically, reinforcing Sceptile into a top tier threat. It's already frightening speed stat has increased from 120 base to an exceptional 145 base speed, boasting the joint highest speed stat in OU along with a new Mega, Mega B Drill. Mega Sceptile also gained an extraordinary boost in its special attack, increasing from 105 base all the way to 145 base special attack. Not only that, but Mega Sceptile has gone even more diverse due to its attack stat increasing from a disappointing base 85 to a more suitable 110 base, enabling Mega Sceptile to become more versatile. Finally, Mega Sceptile gained a forgetful boost in its defense stat, which now stands at an underwhelming 75 base. Upon reflection of its newly gained stats, Mega Sceptile now has the capability of becoming a sweeper within OU, and has two main sets that has been used on the ladder currently. The sub's free attack set, and in my opinion its best set, the all out attacker, so I decided to use the latter and the EVs are. 252 special attack, 188 speed, and 70 attack. Hasty nature holding the Sceptile Light. Its attacks are Energy Ball, Dragon Pulse, Earthquake, and Hidden Power Fire, and its ability is Lightning Rod. 188 speed EVs allows regular Sceptile to outspeed Latios before Mega Revolving, and is a guarantee to take it out with Dragon Pulse after Rocks, which would otherwise be able to Oko Sceptile with Draco Meteor. Also allows regular Sceptile to outspeed Thunderous and beat it once it's been pre weakened as well as enables Mega Sceptile to outspeed Mega Mainetric and take it out thanks to Earthquake, again after it's been weakened, which Mega Mainetric can Oko Sceptile with HP Ice. 252 EVs in Special Attack ensures Mega Sceptile can hit as hard as possible, and the rest is dumped into attack to make use of Earthquake, turning Mega Sceptile into a mixed attacker. Energy Ball is preferred over Leaf Storm, as despite the reducing power, the drop in Special Attack gives uh, threats such as Talonflame and Mega Metagross free boosts, and Energy Ball is also chosen over Gig Drain for the extra power as Mega Sceptile won't necessarily need to restore its HP. As we have already established, Mega Sceptile has frail defences all around. However, if running the Substitute Free Attack set, then Gig Drain is definitely the preferred option to help recover back the 25% loss from Substitute. Dragon Pulse is no longer just a coverage move, but now has become a very strong secondary stab attack thanks to Mega Sceptile's newfound Dragon Typing, which works exceptionally well for other dragons. Earthquake is ran to hit one of Mega Sceptile's common switchings, which is Heatran. EQ is a guaranteed 2 KO on Tran, meaning Tran is no longer a problem, and also does between 30 and 35% to Special Offensive Sylveon, which is another common switching for Mega Sceptile. Hidden Power Fire is there to hit bulky steel types that would otherwise wall Mega Sceptile, such as Skarmory, Ferrothorn, etc., and effectively allows Mega Sceptile to 2 KO them. Finally, Lightning Rod is the new ability, meaning Mega Sceptile now has the perfect switching for one of the most used Pokemon since 4th gen, and that is Rotom Wash. Rotom Wash can no longer spam Volt Switch at will against opposing teams who are running Mega Sceptile, as unlike before, it now has repercussions as Mega Sceptile will gain a complementary boost in Special Attack, increasing it by plus one, and then being able to threaten the opposing team further. An alternative set would be to run 252 speed, 158 special attack and 100 attack in order to guarantee the Oko and Heatran after rocks. Also, dual chop can be ran over Dragon Pulse in order to further complement the mix set. Going on to Mega Sceptile's main checks and counters now. Its main counters are special defensive mons who can easily take its attacks and recover up such as Chansey, Blissey, Sylveon and Clefable. However, its main checks are Mammoth Swine and Weavile Mega Glalie who can all take care of Mega Sceptile with priority Ice Shard as well as Talonflame with Brave Bird and Mega Pinset with Quick Attack. Other priority users such as uh, Bisharp and Dragonite can pick off Mega Sceptile after it's been weakened. Assault Vest Conqueror checks it as it's able to live any hit and retaliate back with an Ice Punch. Bulky Steel types such as Ferrothorn, Skarmory and Mega Aggron check Mega Sceptile as they resist its main stab and HP Fire is a 2 hit KO on Ferro and Skarm, and in turn Ferrothorn can deal substantial amounts of damage with Gyro Ball and Skarmor has a high percent chance to Hoko with Brave Bird, whereas HP Fire is a 4 hit KO on Mega Aggron and in turn can deal massive amounts of damage with Heavy Slam and Ice Punch. Mega Mainetric is able to check Sceptile with HP Ice and Sceptile cannot KO Mega Mainetric without it being weakened first. The initial plan I had in mind for this team was to build a Firewater Grass Core with Mega Sceptile, so the first team member added is Azumarill. 
Azumarill adds the second element to the Firewater Grass Core and provides fantastic coverage alongside Mega Sceptile as it is a fire resist which regular Sceptile appreciates, but more importantly it is an ice resist which are 4 times super effective against Mega Sceptile. In turn Mega Sceptile can take grass type attacks and electric type attacks but, but will mainly be switching in on Rotom Wash which is one of Azumarill's main switchings as Sceptile completely walls Rotom Wash able to gain free boost from Volt Switch. The only thing Mega Sceptile needs to be cautious of is a potential burn, but the set I'm running is more predominantly a special attacker, and Azumarill can take care of Heatran for Mega Sceptile if necessary. I decided to run a set that can easily weaken opposing teams, limiting the amount of switchings for Mega Sceptile and rarely works as a great offensive core, and the set is a choice band variant, and the EVs are 252 attack, 172 HP, and 84 speed. Adamant Nature holding the choice band, his attacks are Waterfall, Play Rough, Aqua Jet and Super Power and his ability is Huge Power. Maximum attack investment and an Adam Nature gives this set maximum power. While the speed EVs are to outpace minimum speed Clefable, Sylveon and opposing Zoomreel, which banded Zoomreel can tweet KO with Waterfall and Play Rough respectively. The remaining EVs are allocated to HP in order to increase Zoomreel's overall bulk. Because of Zoomreel's awful speed stat, Aqua Jet is an absolute necessity in order to get the jump on fast Pokemon that would normally outspeed it, such as Mamoswine, Excadrill and Volcarona. Play Rough is an incredibly powerful stab move that can 2 it KO bulky water types such as Rotom Wash and Quagsire, and provides very useful coverage against the likes of Dragonite and Keldeo. Super Power is specifically for dealing massive damage to Ferrothorn, as it resists both of Azumarill's stab moves and can potentially set up Azers against it with ease. Waterfall is a much more powerful water type stab attack to hit bulkier threats such as Heatran, Hippowdon and Mega Scizor, which can all take at least one Aqua Jet. The purpose of this set is to punch massive holes into the opponent's defensive so that Mega Sceptile can come in and clean up. Thanks to Aqua Jet and Azumarill's high attack stat, along with its huge power ability, it can also pose as a decent revenge killer capable of picking off weakened foes and frail sweepers in order to aid the team. The next team member added to complete the firewater grass core was Heatran. Heatran became the perfect choice as not only did it add the final element to the firewater grass core, it also added the final element to the dragon fairy steel core, providing excellent synergy for the team. Heatran became the fire resist for the team as well as the secondary ice and dragon resist, which is cherished by Mega Sceptile. Both Azumarill and even Mega Sceptile if required, can take water type attacks for Heatran. Not only adding great synergy for the team, Heatran also has the capability of setting up Stealth Rocks, therefore I decided to run a bulky version of Tran and the EVs are 240 HP, 252 Special Defense, 16 Speed, Calm Nature holding the leftovers, its attacks are Lava Plume, Taunt, Roar and Stealth Rocks and its ability is Flash Fire. Standard Special Defense is set, other than running 16 speed EVs in order to outspeed opposing Tran, Skarm, Pharaoh, Clef, T-Tot and Blob, and stop them from setting up hazards with Taunt, and cripple stall teams which are able to beat my core 1v1 thus far. Lava Plume is Heatran's obligatory fire type stab move, packing a decent punch even without special attack investments. The true appeal of the move however is in its 30% burn rate, which discourages most physically inclined ground and fighting types from switching into Heatran, Boring Conkelda. Stealth Rock is the ultimate support move and works particularly well on Heatran as it often finds itself forcing switches against likes of Ferrothorn and Skarmory, which are unable to set up hazards of their own due to taunt, giving it space to use the move. Raw allows Heatran to phase dangerous boosting sweepers such as Swords Dance Talonflame, which Heatran can't touch unless packing Ancient Power or Stone Edge. Toxic can be used overall to cripple bulky water type Pokemon such as Mega Slowbro and Rotom Wash if needed. This, this set's main goal is to provide fantastic coverage alongside Mega Sceptile and Azumarill and find opportunities to set up Stealth Rocks and cripple other bulky Pokemon with Taunt. Thanks to its immunity to both Toxic and Burn, Heatran finds many possibilities switching into bulky Pokes to scout and in turn beginning to proceed with this role. Skarmory was introduced as it works pretty well with Mega Sceptile if running Shed Shell as Skarmory can lower in Trappers, particularly Magnezone, deceiving the opponent and Mega Sceptile can freely switch in on a predicted Volt Switch or Thunderbolt, plus nabbing a free special attack boost. Not only that, Skarmory helps deal with strong physical attackers like Mega Metagross. Finally, Skarmory is also the ground resist for the team, which working in conjunction with Heatran complements to a nice balance to the team. The EVs are 252 HP, 232 defense, 24 speed EVs. 
Impish Nature, holding the Shed Shell, its attacks are Taunt, Roost, Whirlwind and Brave Bird, and its ability is Sturda. The EV spread allows Skarmory to outspeed and prevent other mons from setting up hazards such as Taranto, Ferrothorn, Clefable, Opposing Skarmory, Chancer, etc. This further adds to shutting down stall teams, stopping their shenanigans, which is a big problem to the team, therefore Taunt is a requirement for this set. Roost is round for durability resulting in Skarma being one of the best physical defensive walls and aids in it reliably taking hits from Mega Metagross. Whirlwind is ran to stop Pokemon using Skarma as setup bait and Brave Bird is used as a form of attack which helps to pick off Wuvile and opposing Mega Sceptile. The next team member is Latias. Latias is added as a secondary fighting slash ground resist as well as being the main check to Keldy on the team. Latias also gets access to Defog and despite having two taunt users on the team, it's not a necessity that the team will be able to avoid having hazards set up, and Latias is one of the best defoggers in the game, so the set I decided to run is a standard offensive defogger set, and the EVs are 252 special attack, 252 speed, 4 special defense, team in nature holding the life orb, its attacks are Draco Meteor, hidden power fighting, defog and healing wish, and its build tech is levitate. Due to having good bulk, a good set of resistances as touched on previously, and an above average offensive presence, Latias is one of the best offensive defog users in the metagame. While Latios has even more offensive presence than Latias, Latias has higher bulk and thus the ability to come in safely on more threats than Latios, making it a more consistent defog user, which is one of Latias' main purposes on this team. Draco Meteor is Latias' primary stab attack, and is a great nuke, capable of occurring many offensive threats, including Landris, Keldeo and Thunderous. Psyshock was originally chosen for the next move slot, as it serves as a secondary stab attack, hitting Venusaur and fighting types such as Conkelda, Tracking and Breloom for super effective damage, but was later changed to Hidden Power Fighting as Bisharp was looking like a big threat to the team, and lets Latias catch Tyranitar, which is a common switching, as Tyranitar's main function on a team is to pursuit trap the Latti Twins. Finally, Healing Wish is the niche of the set which is now extremely common, aiding the team immensely by providing great support to a specific team member, which may have been crippled by a status move or weakened considerably to the point where it is no longer effective for the team. Healing Wish completely nullifies any particular problem to the team and in certain situations can be the difference between winning and losing. The final team member added is Talonflame. After finishing structuring the correct balance of the team, I decided I needed to add a late game sweeper, a win condition, to help finish up games and is able to beat Stall once effectively shut down by Taunt. SD Talonflame is a huge threat as it forces a lot of switches, giving up multiple opportunities to set up. With all this considered, the EV spread I decided to use is 252 attack, 168 speed, 88 HP. Jolly Nature holding the sharp beak, its attacks are Swords Dance, Brave Bird, Flare Blitz and Roost and its ability is Gale Wings. The EV spread allows Talonflame to outspeed Thunderous amongst other threats and importantly outprioritize it and is able to Oko Thunderous at plus 2 after rocks. Jolly Nature is opted with this spread to ensure as much speed as possible with it 252 attack EVs coupled with Swords Dance further boosting its attack stat and the rest of the EVs dumped into HP to ensure Talonflame is able to take hits giving it more chances to set up and lastly contributes to Talonflame reaching that all important odd HP stat meaning it can reliably switch into Stealth Fox twice as opposed to once. Brave Bird is a high powered priority stab attack that is a large proportion of the meta game for decent damage. Flare Blitz is a secondary stab that provides decent coverage as it hits Steel and Electric type Pokemon which would otherwise resi resist Brave Bird. Roost allows Talonflame to accumulate multiple boosts in front of Pokemon that can't significantly hurt it and also gets priority, allowing Talonflame to soften blows from faster Pokemon that use Rock or Electric type moves if the need arises. Short Beak is opted over Life Orb to reduce the amount of recoil Talonflame takes, at the cost of a bit of power while still increasing the damage of Brave Bird. I really hope you enjoyed this explanation. A quick overview, the team has a fantastic balance of Firewater Grass Core, which was intended along with a Dragon Fairy Steel Core, contributing in excellent coverage all around for the team. Heatran and Skarmory also work as a good defensive partnership, as well as Skarmory and Mega Sceptile, which gives the opportunity of a free boost, and thus it is vital to Mega Evolve Sceptile as soon as the opportunity arises. Potential problems to the team are Bishop, particularly if it is allowed to set up, which is why HP fighting was introduced on Latias after I finished building the team. Also, opposing Mega Sceptile can be problematic, 
but Talonflame provides an excellent check to that. And that's it guys, once again I hope you enjoyed it, if you did be sure to show your support by leaving a like, sharing with your friends, comment on what you think to the team in the comment section below and of course subscribe for more. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.